Hi right, everyone, welcome back to the Keep the Ball Welding podcast. Uh, here with Adam and Ash. Gentlemen, you're doing well? All good, thanks. You? Yeah. All good, thank you. Bravo. Yeah, very good. Thank you very much. Um, we've both got wins to talk about. We haven't done that yet, I don't think. You've uh, been letting the team down, Ash. Shall we start with you? What did you make of uh, your comeback win? I think it was, from what I'm saying, it's the first time you've ever scored twice in stoppage time to win a game in your history, which I found shocking. Yeah, I was quite um, shocked when I saw that stat. I mean, technically it was three goals, wasn't it? But one got disallowed. I mean, it had been a pretty... Uh, I mean, it was an own goal anyway, wasn't it? I mean, when, I'm, when I'd seen it on Sky Sports, they put McTominay, but it was it was an own goal, wasn't it? If it would have stood. But um, to be honest, I was watching the match and then I turned it off after about 75, 80 minutes. So I had enough. I was... Uh, wasn't going to plan. No, it was shocked. It, it was it was awful. I, I genuinely thought they'd play better, but um, it was uh, it was terrible. The goal, their goal was terrible. It should never have happened. It was really bad, uh, really bad play. And then oh no, I didn't cover himself in glory at all, did he? No, I've I've seen the goal briefly, only on a mate's mobile. He showed me um after football on Saturday and it did look like another another moment and yeah, he's, not, just... he's not doing himself any favours is he no not really it's... <laughs> yeah it was pretty it was pretty poor I mean at the end of the day luckily at least they got the win in the end which I suppose you know that's all that matters isn't it is the three points on the board it's better than having yet another loss but it um you know Rashford got took off quite early on as well which you know, it says a lot about his current form and, and season after coming off after, a, you know, a wonderful season and World Cup um, Euros last season as well. It's uh, pretty poor. Am I right in saying that Casemiro got dragged as well? Yeah. You know, it was, um, it, you know, it was shocking. It just really was embarrassing to watch, really. It's, it's a bad time. Well, at least you can say that Ten, Ten Hag's trying to make difficult decisions and and bold decisions. And, and you can argue that it turned around. It doesn't matter how fortuitous it is. It's, uh, it ended the rock, didn't it? And ended the uh, the bad run of results. And, you know, Brentford yeah, team know. was big team's problems, to be fair. They're, they're a team that played well away from home. So it's a, I think yeah. it's a good three points. Oh, yeah, it's a massive three points. I, I just don't understand this team lineup, so I just don't see how Garnacho doesn't get in the starting team. It absolutely baffles me. I, I think he's a cracking player. I just don't see it. He just he doesn't even he's not always the first choice substitute either, which I, it just baffles me. It really does. I mean, the impact he has when he comes on in games is always you know ninety percent top notch. He, he just he just needs to be getting more and more game time for me. He, he just brings something that. You know, he's young, he's, he's hunger, uh, his determination is exceptional. And I just don't understand why he just doesn't get a, get in the team. Is that because he's such a good impact player? I know, yeah, but it's, you know, you go back to United back in the day when Solskjaer was, you know, the impact sub and stuff like that, which I get, you know, it's always good to have a backup plan. But I mean, you know, when you've got all the stuff that's been going on with Anthony and stuff like that, you know, bring Anthony on when there's like 15, 20 minutes left. You know, Garnacho, he, he earns he earns the right to start massively. And and he's a natural winger, isn't he, at the end of the day? You know, yeah. I think he's proven himself now. He, he deserves it. I think it's just respect for the player. He, he deserves to be starting. Even if they're just starting like in the Champions League and stuff, it's or in the Cup games and stuff, he just doesn't seem to be getting much of a look in. He, he plays that Pellistri Pel- 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 um, on the right and stuff. I just think, you know, give Gonacho a go. Do you think there's anything to do with an attitude in training or? I mean, possibly, but oh, I just, I don't know. I think, I think it's just like any manager, isn't it? They tend to have their favourites and, you know, maybe he knows better. Maybe they've had a knock, stuff like that. You know, you don't know what goes on behind the scenes fully, do we? But, to me, he's, you know, he's a young player coming up and, you know, I think he's really, really talented. 
And, you know, with the way Rashford started this season, I mean, he's been pretty, pretty poor, really. And I'm a big fan of Rashford, but I don't know what's going on um, with his form at the minute. I mean, hopefully now we're having that three points and stuff, they seem to hopefully turn a corner and, you know, build on from that and just ignore the last, you know, how many fixtures and just carry on from there. Because before you, before you know it, the, the top four will be like completely out of reach, especially with the way that teams are performing around them. Yeah, it was, um, it was a game you had to win to keep in touch, really, wasn't it? It's, uh... it's a six-pointer already, and, and it's not even Christmas yet. It's mad that we talk about United like this. And after, you know, spent most of my life with United being the, the pinnacle and the envy of everyone else, and now they're just not insignificant, but no one takes them seriously as a, you know, title rivals or... You know, going for the Champions League this year. Um, I think a lot of your fan base has already wrote off top four hopes. I think it's probably a bit too early for that. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not looked good. But it brings me on to my, my second point about United is, is this a turning point or was you just lucky to get get the three points the way it transpired? And it was like 98th minute winner, was it? Or something like that, which I don't yeah, suppose Mr. Yeah, Mr. Varane won't be doing much moaning about the stoppage time, will he, after that? But, um, <laughs> I think I think at the end of the day it's like any team isn't it a bad run always comes to an end and I just yeah. hope that they can it, it's a bit unfortunate that it's international break now so at least so they're going to you know lose momentum potentially but it, you know it's it's come hopefully at the right time hopefully the players can go back now with the international teams and, and carry on and then come back and just kind of crack on from there and start again almost but with the way United have been this season, you've just got no idea what's going to happen. I mean, the defensive issues with the injuries and stuff have just been an absolute bugbear and a massive issue. But, you know, Amrabat came in, didn't he? They've been playing him left back and stuff. And I mean, he's done a decent job, but, you know, you don't want Amrabat in left back. You want him in the middle of the park with Casemiro to allow the attacking players to do, you know, what they want to do. But, yeah. Well, Regulon's back after the international break, isn't he? Which frees that position yeah. up. Yeah, which I think I think will help. I think he's had a good start, to be honest. I think he's, you know, he, he hasn't stopped. He's he's gave it his all from from all the football that I've seen him play. I mean, he obviously would be your first choice left back, but I mean, I think he's done a decent enough job. Uh, I, I'm I'm much preferred when they signed him over uh, Kukurea. Yeah, I can which, see why you'd think that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I just think he's played more at a high level. Um, Brings that a little bit more experience. I think Kukurea is a good player, but yeah, nothing really jumps out of him for me. And what, what's the next fixture? Um, I know you got. Is it Brighton? No, um, no, no City City before Brighton. Brighton. City have got Brighton, haven't they? Yeah, I know, man. You got City coming up, haven't you? But it's not the next fixture. Yeah, Sheffield United away. Right. Which I mean, you know, they've got to be steamrolling Sheffield United. No disrespect to Sheffield United, but I mean, you know, United should be getting three or four just to get that more confidence back. Hopefully, a couple of goals for Rashford and Fernandez just to give them all that, you know, kick up the arse. Yeah, I agree. I think um, certainly before you play Man City as well, you wouldn't want to have a negative result against. Um, Absolutely not. <laughs> no, definitely not. And I, I'm pretty sure there's probably a Champions League game sandwiched in between the two league games. It would be Copenhagen for you, wouldn't it? So, it, arguably, you say you've got two winnable fixtures there to to build up ahead of steam before you play Man City. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. They've got um, Sheffield United on the Saturday night, and then they play again on Tuesday, and then is the derby the Saturday or the Sunday? Sunday, isn't it? Half, half free kickoff. So yeah, you'd, you'd want to be going into Man City with two, with two good wins, and I think they're definitely two winnable games by a fair amount of goals. You'd like to see them scoring, you know, three or four goals each game, really. You'd like to think so, yeah, but you know, I bet you said that with a guess. That's the right game. Yeah, it's... So, you're a very hard side to predict. I mean, they've got a, they've got the potential. They've got the players. They've got the manager. 
I, I do believe they will. I do believe they will come good. I mean, like you say, more players are going to come back now from injury and hopefully we don't lose any during the international break, which is always a risk, isn't it, at the end of the day with so many international players. Yeah. But you know, all but hope, all but hope. Ed, what did you make of United's uh, Fergie time winner? Well, um, I thought they got quite lucky, to be fair. I mean, I know they had the goal and then it was offside, but you could see that they were kind of really pushing on. I think, I think they got lucky. I do think they got lucky, but I think you know it doesn't. It doesn't matter, does it? How how you win the game as long as you win it. And it's it's a, it's a massive three points, I think, with the other results that kind of, you know, followed all the teams above, uh, you know, got points. I think if, if United have lost that, I think that have been about 10 points off the top. Might, might even be more. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, they're, they're the games that you've got to win. Uh, it's a tricky team, tricky team to play, and I think you know he's, you just got to do what you what you've got to do um, with the games. But yeah, I just I just thought it was it just wasn't a typical Man U performance, was it? I don't think they've really had one this season. I know they give us a a run, um, you know, they, they troubled us, but I just I. I don't know if it's just that he can't get a team together because of the injuries and stuff, but he just doesn't seem very United-like, does it? Um, yeah. Um, from a neutral point of view, why, why do you think um, Guy actually can't get in the side? Because I was, I'm, I'm with Ash, I think he, he's there a right to start, although I think because his impact off the bench is so good... Mm. They try and keep that back for sort of if the game's not going to plan or, you know, to try and kill teams off maybe if they are in a winning position. And yeah. maybe Rashford plays because he's the moment's man for Man yeah. United and has been for the last 18 months that you can't get both of them in the side. Yeah. It just seems weird that someone that does so well for the club just never gets a fair shout of um, of walking out the tunnel in the, in the starting lineup. Yeah. No, I mean, I don't, I don't know why he doesn't get in. I mean, he, like I say, he, he came on and he gave us a problem, didn't he? He's a, he's a good player with scores. Um, Rashford hasn't really done that much. I know he had that period last season where he was just on fire and he found his form, but I don't know. I think you've got to play your best players. And if that, if Garnacho's playing better than Rashford and he's contributing more to the team, then. He deserves to be starting the next game, and he's he's probably asking himself the you know the same question. Um, but I I I don't know why why he can't get in because you know all I've seen from him that I've seen from him is is positive. I'd say he's probably one of their best uh, their best players actually. And if you don't give your players the minutes, you know how can they improve? How can they job with the the team around them? So yeah, it seems a bit of a from a neutral point of view as well, it seems a bit questionable um, the why you can't actually get into get into the squad. Yeah, I mean, I know he's young, but um, it does seem like, you know, he's, he's more than earned his opportunity. I know um, Ash probably had to confirm this, but Palestri started two or three the last half a dozen games, so he seems to be trusted yeah. with a starting berth. Uh, and, and I, I think it's because with... Bonaccio... Plays on the left, same as Rashford, doesn't he? Yeah. But, I mean, you know, they're both right-footed. Surely they can play on the right-hand side. Well, you'd think so, wouldn't you? Um, some players just aren't suited to to running down the touchline. They, they like to cut in, I guess. But, you know, you'd, I'd suggest Garnacho is young enough to be able to coach him into that role. Mm. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it just seems a bit weird. But, like I say, I mean, you've got the win and... Uh, you know, it's uh, not all doom and gloom for once when we're doing our pods. I know you've done, what, three or four of us now and you haven't, haven't yet spoke about United win, I don't think, so. <laughs> nah, few and far between lately. <laughs> Ad, we'll move on to um, the Arsenal City game. Obviously, we was both there and thank you very much again for the ticket. No um, worries. Now the dust has settled and uh, your heart rate's back to normal. 
<laughs> Just a bit. What, what were your views? I thought we were brilliant. I mean, looking back on it, I think obviously being there, obviously you, you, emotions are highs and it's a big game. But I think, you know, we were talking at half time, weren't we, about, you know, what, what, we, what we'd seen. Um, and I think Arteta got it spot on. You've got to give him, you've got to give him the credit where it's due. And I think you know last season he's made subs that are questionable at questionable times, and we haven't got the result that we've wanted. But I think he got it spot on. I think he brought the right players on at the right time, um, and I think we deserved it. I think the defense, um, the defense were brilliant. Rice was for me. Rice was. You know the the player. You know the the man at the match for me. I thought he some of the tackles that he was putting in and he was getting them spot on. That's exactly why we bought him. That's exactly why we bought him in. Um, exactly why it's cost the amount of money that the vast for him. Um, and what he already offers for us in such a short period of time. Um. I think he's, he's going to be one of our key players if we are going to challenge, you know, as we want to. Um, but I, I thought I thought we were brilliant um, to keep a player like Harlan quiet, not in one game but two, in both games that we we've we've um, we faced them um, recently. It's a big, you know, it's a big achievement. I think actually a team it was a team performance. Um, I think it's it's going to help them massively from the you know the mentality side of it that actually we can go and we can beat them, um, and obviously having Martinelli back, I think you can see you can see just in that you know short period of time he was on the pitch what what he can bring and he can change a game and he's just he's always looking to go forward. He's not wanting to pass back like some other players do. He's always confident to go forward, and he'll, you know, he'll, he'll take on the shot as well. He doesn't not. He's not about having the extra, um, extra touch. And we've actually got a comment on on the TikTok live um, where somebody else agrees that the right players, especially um, Rice and Raya. Um, but no, I was I was really impressed actually. As stressed out as I was, I was really impressed with with the performance, and I did watch the highlights as well. Um, in the following days, and I think, I think we deserve that win. Um, but it should have been a red as well. So it's just yeah, lucky we we're gonna that we're gonna impact. get onto that. Yeah, it's just it's just lucky that that didn't have a an impact because it could have been a big a big problem come the end of the season. Um, <clears throat> if we'd not got that result, um, yeah, I was really impressed. Thought we were brilliant. Yep, I uh, I completely agree. I think um, apart from the moment where Rice cleared the ball off the line uh, from the corner and then Ake put the ball over and he really should have scored, um, that was City's only shot on target. Yeah, the one that Rice cleared off the ball uh, off the line, which um, mm. which shows how well we defended. I think uh, you've already alluded to it. Arteta got it absolutely spot on on the day, which. You know, credit to him. He's uh, he takes a lot of criticism uh, when things go wrong. So he should, it's only right that he gets the praise when it goes goes for us. Um, I thought he set us up perfectly. The, we've learned not to go toe to toe with City. We we're intelligent of when we press. Um, we all we both said we wanted to see party start, but I was kind of okay with Jorginho playing. I thought he played very well actually, Jorginho for seventy minutes. Yeah. And allowed Rice to press a little bit higher up the pitch uh, and, and do what he's, he's good at. So he, he just got everything right on the day. Um, and then the substitutions, obviously, I know they're all four combined from the goal and that's sort of a, a freak incident, but they were all perfectly timed at the right time and just just subtle little tweaks to what we was doing. Parto was a little bit more adventurous with the ball, played a bit higher up the pitch than Jorginho did. Tommy Yasu... Uh, I thought made a lot more forward runs, looking for a, a higher ball to nod on, just like the goal. Havertz had more impact in 20 minutes than Nketiah has all season. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, we, we know what Martinelli's about and what he did was no surprise to us. But, um, it was good. It was it was so nice to finally get one over on them. I know we've beaten them in cup competitions and that, but it's been a long time in the league. 
Um, yeah. and, they, and they don't fail to let us know that. So it was good to shove one up them. And, and uh, yeah, it's, um, I was thinking to myself, you know, if we'd just done that last year, we'd have won the title. Mm. That was the difference between the two sides was the results between each other. Yeah. Uh, on the, on the, on the day, you know, and, um, although you don't have to beat your rivals, I mean, City regularly go through and win the league without beating Liverpool, but they're so much better against everyone else. And, uh, yeah, I just hope that we can continue with, uh, the form of good spirit and, and take it into the, to the next part of the season. I think we've got a pretty hard one coming up. So it was, um, an important three points, but nothing's done yet. We, we're not, not silly enough to get carried away, but we are, we are entitled to enjoy the occasion of and the celebration police are out in force again. Yeah. Oh, Arsenal, Arsenal are over celebrating, blah, blah, blah. Well, what the fuck do you turn up for at football if you're not allowed to enjoy it when you win? <laughs> it pisses me off. Really pisses me off when, when people make comments. And I think, well, I've seen comments, you know, that United shouldn't have celebrated like they did. They won the 97th minute. Of course, they're going to go mad. Yeah. It's, you know, there's too many killjoys in the, in the sport now. And, um. Yeah. Well, my message to them is fucking. Well, if we want to celebrate, we should. You got to celebrate your wins. You know, it's just how it is. You're not. You're not going to win all, all your games all season. You've got to celebrate when you get them. Um. It just seems that we're not allowed to, unless unless we actually win something, we're not allowed to. But I think it's a huge achievement. We should celebrate it. We should be proud of actually. Um. How far we've actually come, because that's two games, two big games that we lost last season, which determined the season for us. That they won and we didn't, and to go and for them to come to us, and I, I fully expect that their fans and them expected to just turn us over, um, and to show that actually, you know, the game was managed correctly. The players that we've bought in have contributed. The subs have also contributed. Um, and we finally got that result, not once but twice. We beat them twice, and obviously, you know, very late on goals. Um, I think it's gonna it's gonna be massive for the for the players' mentality when we when we do play, you know, the those those rivals that we need to be beating. Um, we've just beat you know the the toughest team in the league, in my opinion, um, and we did it in a clever way. We did it in a way where. We had to be patient. We had to make the changes. We had to use all of the, you know, all of what we had available. Um, change things around. Obviously, bring party back in. Um, yeah, I was just, thought, I was just, thought it, was, it was brilliant, and I'm, I'm glad we finally got the, got the win. Yeah, and just touching on party, I know we've had a question. Um, can Mikel use a double pivot with Rice and Party? Um, absolutely. It's exactly what we want to see going into the rest of the season. That that should be the the midfield duo with Erdegaard. Absolutely, it's no brainer for me. We just see how well it worked last year with Xhaka. Rice is a better player than Xhaka. Well, Xhaka had an amazing season. Rice is an upgrade, and so it should be for 105 million pounds. Uh, that's what I want to see. If they're fit, they play. I don't want to see no experiments. I don't want to see Kai Havertz playing centre field or Fabio yeah. Vieira or fucking win the dog. You know, just as an experiment, I want to see Declan Rice and Party playing in midfield, one further forward than the other. I don't think they have to play alongside each other. Mm. I think Rice Rice can push on and do the jack of all from last year. Um, he's intelligent enough to know when he has to get back and defend more so than Havertz or Vieira in that role. Mm. Um, and he's better at pressing than those two as well. Absolutely, those two should be playing together. And I assume you agree, Adam. Yeah, no, I think that's uh, they're our best players. And I think actually it'd be really interesting to see them play together, actually have that consistency together and seeing I I just think it'll it'll be solid in in the midfield. I think it actually gives the players forward, Odegaard, Saka, Jesus, Martinelli will give them, you know, more as well. I think you've got party who can feed a ball, you've got Rice who can also feed a ball. You've got two ex two solid players to get back. You know, for defence, um, to help out when when they need it. I think actually, 
when you put in Zinchenko as well, pushing forward, I actually think we'll, with that set up um, against the right teams, we just overpower them. We just, you know, we that that's how I feel about it anyway. Um, and that's a non-biased point of view. I just think you, you look at that um, midfield and it's just, it's exciting. That That's how I look at it. I think you've got to have your best players playing week in, week out. And with their injuries, that should be, in my opinion, that should be what we're, what we're going with. Yeah, yeah I agree completely. Ash, did you, um, did you catch the game? Yeah, I saw. Uh, I didn't watch all of it, the whole game. Um, I, wa- I watched, you know, bits of it as I was out at a family barbecue. Um, but now I thought Arsenal played well. Um, the goal was what it was, wasn't it? But I think with the constant pressure and stuff, it's you don't care how it goes. And at the end of the day, do you just want to score and get the three points? But mm. I think it was a cracking result for Arsenal and everybody else in the uh, in the you know top five, top six. I think it was it was good. We don't want to. A season where City just run around with the league. We want, you know, we want it to be really interesting. Well, I do anyway. I just think it's, I think it's much better. Yeah, I don't but, think you'll see too many people arguing with you, mate. They don't want, uh, you don't want to become a Germany where your league's dominated by the same team by 20 points every season. It's, uh, yeah. it, it was the best result for the league. And obviously, from a buyer's point of view, the best result for us. But um, I should imagine most people watching apart from the Spurs Spurs lot would have uh, been more, more than happy with Arsenal winning that game I was a bit um, oh, I saw the bit when uh, Raya took that touch too much and Alvarez nearly scored off well, that was a bit ropey he, he, he didn't seem as confident in that game as, as previous games I've seen him whether it was because of the atmosphere or the opponent um, he, he just didn't seem as comfortable as I've seen him in the past well, like I, I, said, I, didn't watch, I didn't watch all the game but just from the the bit that I saw. Second half, he was absolutely fine. I, I'm glad you brought him up because I was going to going to mention him. Um, second half, I thought he was absolutely fine. There was no hairy moments. A couple of kind of misplaced long passes, but you're asking someone to find a 70 yard ball. It's not always going to find its destination. Yeah. Um, that what happened to Raya with the Alvarez thing happens to every goalkeeper every every season. They'll, they'll have one or two of those moments where they. The ball back to him wasn't particularly great from Gabriel. It didn't have enough pace on it. Um, he should have probably just tried to get rid first time, but he's doing this, as he's told to do, to try and find uh, an Arsenal player in between the lines to break the press. And yeah. I thought it was very deliberate. He wasn't, you know, being cocky or anything like that. And Arteta's already come out and defended him for it. It's put your foot on the ball and wait for them to come out because eventually they will try and press. And as soon as they did, he might, nine times out of ten picked out his pass, and I thought his performance was decent. So, um, the trouble is with our fan base is they got too much loyalty to players at times, and uh, I understand it. They all love Ramsdale, and I was quite shocked to see him get dropped as quickly as he was without making an error. But Ray is the goalkeeper; you've got to back him, and I thought our fans got on his back a lot on the weekend, yeah. and it doesn't it doesn't help. Um. And he, you know, the Alvarez thing aside, he didn't really put a foot wrong, to be, to be honest with you. So I'm more than happy with him go. I think he's a better keeper than Ramsdale on it, and we'll reap the benefits from it at the end of the season. Um, at the end of the day, he's but he, goalkeepers are no different to any other player that comes into a new team. It takes you five or six games to to click with your new teammates, and that's the period he's going through at the moment. Ad, do you agree or? Yeah, I completely agree. I think I was on edge um, when that happened. And I think, like you say, it happens to all keepers. We, we've seen Eddie do it to keepers. And, you know, we've got a, uh, you know, we've we've got a result out of it because he's, he's pressed. But I think at the time, obviously, you're nil-nil and you're against a team that will punish you. And then, Obviously, after the game, you look at it and you think, obviously, Arteta come out and said, actually, it was his um, it was his instruction. He said to him, do this. Um, and he, like you say, he's defended him. 
Um, but you know, at the end of the day, he's just got a clean sheet against Man City. The team just got a clean sheet against Man City. Um, I don't think he had too much to do, and I think that's a credit to the defense and the rest of the team for how they control, and obviously Arteta for how how they control the game. But I think you know, give him give him time. Let's not judge him just yet. Let let him actually have, you know, a consistent run of games where we actually see him tested as well. Um, we've seen his stats from last season. Some of them are quite similar to Ramsdale, actually. But I think he's going to be nervous. It's a new team. You know, still only on loan as well. Um, but I think, as we've said in the last like three or four pods, I trust what Arteta does. If he puts him on the pitch, he puts him on the pitch. And at the end of the day, it's paid off. He didn't end 6 0. He didn't have six put past him. You know, he did nothing come of it. Um, so, yeah, I'm quite happy with him. Um, and like I, like I was saying to you actually, Paul, on Sunday is that I know there's a lot of noise around having two top keepers, but if United had another top keeper, Onana would be benched because he's made too many mistakes. Whereas we're in a position now where if Raya makes multiple mistakes over multiple games, we've got a keeper that's good enough to come in and compete. And the yeah, same as yeah. Ramsdale's making a lot of mistakes. We've got Raya to come in to take his chance. So actually, I know there's a lot of negative like noise around it, but actually it's smart from Arteta because nobody's taking their position for granted. If you want to play for this club, you've got to be at the top level. And if you want to be on the you know on the team sheet, then you can't become complacent. So, you know, I'm I'm quite happy with both keepers, but for me, Raya's not done anything wrong, and I actually want to see more of him. Yeah, and Ad, uh, uh, Ash, sorry, I just before we move on, Ad made a really good point there about Anano and not having um, any competition for his place. Would you agree that if you, uh, who is your backup keeper? It's not Tom Heaton, is it? Is so they, you bought a young Turkish kid, haven't you? Yeah, there was that young Turk. I can't remember his name. Batalunde or whatever. Oh, I don't know. But um, is that a fair point? He would have been dropped by now if you'd had someone that was capable of coming in the sticks. Oh, I don't know. Not for me. Um, I, I think with Onana, I know we make mistakes, but when your teams and your defense, you know, you're being over possession and stuff like that, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna concede goals. You're gonna make mistakes. He's working that much, but I think with Onana, he brings so much more with his range of passing. Um, for me, I, I think he adds that difference in, you know when the, the, the breaks on us, so if he can, you know, he'll ping the ball 60, 70 yards. Yeah, he's not going to get it every single time. You see Edison missing missing passes like that. Not often, um, but, you know, let's face it, we're all we're all human at the end of the day. But I, I think it's good having two good keepers, but then I think it can be negative as well. I just think you haven't got that consistency then with the defence and stuff like that of playing together. I suppose it's a bit different with Ramsdale because he's played with them before and stuff like that, but... I don't think Onana's done a bad job so far. Um, and I, I definitely wouldn't drop him, even if we had a second keeper. Not at the minute. I mean, it's a brand new club, completely different league. He's had to, you know, part of the language barrier and all that sort of stuff. It's been a massive, massive culture change and stuff for him. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't drop him by any means. Even if, like I say, we had a second top goalkeeper either. Um, but I, I think it is good to have competition. Um, don't get me wrong, but I, I wouldn't be dropping him yet. What about this scenario then? Imagine you still had to hang out at the club as the backup. Yeah, I still wouldn't drop Anana. Not, no. not at the minute. Not at the minute. I just think it's a lot of pressure for him. He's come on, you know, he's, he's gone from into Lanty United. And I just think that's pressure in itself, playing in a different league with a new manager and stuff like that. I, I wouldn't. You know, you've got to give them at least a season, at least. I mean, you know, they're all they're all having criticism and stuff at the minute. So, oh no, I'm not going to get it more so than anybody else, isn't it? Because he's letting the goals in, or he's you know he's the goalkeeper. Um, and you know, look at De Gea over the last couple of seasons, the kind of mistakes that he'd made. But you know, goalkeepers' mistakes always get criticised ten times more than a, an outfield player. And you know, everybody knows that, don't they? Over the years, it's 
you know, you don't think of the great passes or the great saves or the penalty saves or, you know, when they, when they you know, the, a ball over the top and the goalkeepers come out to be like the last man and clear it and stuff like that. They don't get a, a, enough recognition for me in comparison to outf- outfield players. No, I agree with that. It's, um, you know, they're, they're heavily scrutinised. They're not praised enough. So, no arguments there. I think Onana's, he's made some really, really poor errors, like really basic goalkeeping. But if your confidence is at rock bottom, then it's, you know, what do you expect? I think a big part of Onana's problem is he's, um, he's not really got anyone to pass the ball to. No. And, and the league's so much faster. The Premier League, it's the intensity and stuff, whereas in the Italian league, it's probably not as quick and, you know, every you know you can be a bit more lapsy days and stuff on the ball because you're not playing top teams every single week. That's no disrespect to Inter Milan or the Italian league, but in the Premier League, it's totally different. The intensity is a lot faster. Um, like you say, if you're playing with different defenders every week, which doesn't help either, does it? It's you know, there's been no there's been no consistency in the United squad whatsoever. It, no. It's you know, I don't think Tenard's even picked his best team at all this season because you know, <laughs> there's been that many injuries. It's just been unreal. Yeah, no, I agree. It's been hard. I don't know um, how much of the aftermath of the Arsenal game you you both caught with the City players falling out with the Arsenal coaches and. Mm. Um, I thought Haaland's behaviour on the game for the 90 minutes was as petulant as I've seen him. I, I, I can't stand him. I'm going to put this on record now. I cannot stand him. I know he scores a ton of goals. Fucking clap, clap, tapping into an empty net at the back post like with a team that creates 18 chances a game for you. I, he's a bang average footballer. Saliba and Gabriel pocketed him again. Um and all he did was whinge and moan at the ref. And I see him get involved in a little scrap at the end. I know Kyle Walker did. Do you think... I don't want to use the word fear, because I, I can't stand that word in, in football terms, but City are just a little bit wary that they've been caught up, not only by Arsenal, but I think Liverpool will be there with them this year as well. And mm. maybe Tot- maybe Tottenham, but they've still got to prove a little <laughs> bit more to me, to be honest. But um, they're just... Where they've had it their own way for so long... Um, they're a little bit wary of what's behind them and they're starting to, or a few of their players are starting to crack a little bit. Yeah. I, I agree. I mean, I don't know if you watched the Wolves Man City game. Um, I didn't know. Obviously, Wolves 1 2 1. I mean, Craig Dawson, uh, I take my hat off to the bloke. He had Haaland in his back pocket. I think Haaland had one shot all game. He, he absolutely defended him to a, an inch of his life. And, and I don't think Haaland's really faced that before where. He's had to really, really work in again. Like you say, they've been creating like 18 chances and he's got an header at the back post or he's, he's clean for on goal or something like that. You know, it's the last few games have been really difficult for him, haven't they? And they've not got to draw into that, you know, with that massive creativity and who can ping a ball 60, 70 yards, you know, with his eyes closed. I really do feel with City now, losing the last few games, I do feel, you know, they've got to work harder now than ever. And I think Pep probably realises and I think losing the players like, Mares and Gunduan and stuff like that will will show. No, oh, they're definitely missing uh, Gunduan um, and Mares to an extent. They should have had the quality to deal with Mares and Doku looks. He didn't he didn't do much against us to be fair, but he does look half tidy when he's when he's been called upon for them. But um, the season was Mares is the top goal scorer, wasn't he? And then last season they barely played him. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't understand Pep's tactic. It's it's bizarre. For me. I still think even last year, Morris's GA output was third or fourth best at the club. Yeah. yeah. I believe so. So they were still getting great productivity out of him. And I know they got a bit of money for him, but they only got 30 million. That doesn't buy you much in this day and age. Not nowadays. Uh, no. So, I mean, I don't know what the situation was. So I, I mean, I don't, I don't pretend to care or give a toss about Man City and what they do off the pitch. But, um, he may well have been screaming to go. He's, he's what is he, thirty-one? An opportunity to go to Saudi and earn the big bucks. He might have forced his way out. I don't know, but yeah, they just there seems to be a few cracks appearing. Um, and their behaviour for a team that's just won the treble and should fear nobody was questionable to say the least. And yet, all I've seen in the media is people mocking Arsenal about celebrating at the end and or mm-hmm. lucky deflected goal. But if we're going to talk about luck on the day. Um, 
How the hell were Man City not playing with 10 men? It's not one but twice. It was a red card for me. Absolutely. When when you saw um, Curtis Jones get sent off the other day for Liverpool and then his red card got refused to be overturned, to me it was no different. Hmm. It, it was. It, it had to be a red, didn't it, to be the consistency to be there? It was amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, and th- this brings us on to the final bit of the show. Well, there's, there's two bits here, two questions. I'll ask you both. I'll start with you, Ed. Michael Oliver, incompetent or corrupt? Corrupt. Ash? Both. <laughs> because I can deal with, I, I, I accept that some refs are incompetent or they're just, you know, they're not the best. And usually they're in the Championship or League One. I have a, this debate with a mate all the time and he says they can't be corrupt. It's not, it's not in our game. Well, why can't it? Michael Oliver was in Abu Dhabi during the week. Refereeing. Yeah. In the country that owns Manchester City. Now, that's got to be a conflict of interest. I don't mm-hmm. care. He, you know, 99% certain that he probably hasn't taken a backhand or anything like that. But there is a conflict of interest there. He shouldn't be refereeing Man City games. Now, when the day he comes back, or the weekend he comes back into Premier League action and he's doing Man City away at Arsenal, which is supposed to be the country's top ref, and not once but twice he fails to send a player off with two awful tackles yeah. I mean I can almost accept that he didn't get the first one right but that's what VA asked for and we'll move on to VAR in a sec he couldn't make his mind up quick enough not to book him for the second one now I couldn't help but think at the time of Jorginho was on a yellow card if he had made that tackle the other way around say on Bernardo Silva or someone that may roll around a bit given his uh, his, his previous endeavours and I think Declan Rice saved Kovacic a little bit because he didn't make a massive deal of it. Um, yeah, Jorginho would have been sent off. I I, I couldn't believe it. Was, there's no there's nothing that can explain it to me other than corruption for that decision. He or either that or he just absolutely shit his pants. If it was Shaka, the first one he'd have been off. Yeah, absolutely. That wouldn't I, have I, even needed to go to VAR for it. They'd have just sent him off. It was a shocking, shocking decision. I know um, the one the week before with. Um, Liverpool and the disallowed goal was was shocked the world of football as well but I actually think this decision's as bad I know it's a different outcome it wasn't a disallowed goal it was just a red card but imagine if we didn't win that game we should have been playing for an hour against 10 men yeah um, I just don't know how they get all this stuff wrong they've got all this technology and which brings me on to my second point does VAR actually do enough for the game because how the hell, seeing it in replay mode, as whoever was on the VAR, and I don't know who it was, um, not said to Michael Oliver, you need to go and have a look at that because you've missed yeah. one. But for me, the, it, it's not a coincidence that it's not the first Arsenal City game that it's happened in. It was the same when Edison wiped out, I think it was Eddie, he went through his ankle. It might have been Odegaard. I can't remember who it was, but he went straight through the player and the ball. Nothing was given. There's been multiple incidences in the games where City should have been dead to 10 men. We should have had penalties and they just turned a blind eye to it. So it can't be incompetent. It's got to be corruption because you've got the technology there. They've looked at it and decided no. And obviously me and you were in the stadium. We couldn't see it. But I know you were getting messages letting you know that obviously it was a red um, and yeah. from where we were, you could see. I mean, Odegaard was obviously hurt, and then actually watching the um, watching the replay back, how that went to VAR, and they determined. And bearing in mind they're watching it in slow motion as well, which is something we've mentioned on here before, that it always looks worse in slow motion. You can yeah. see him go straight through the side of Odegaard's ankle. Well, his foot. He twists. It twists his foot. For me, that that's that serious foul play. He could have broke his leg, in in my opinion, and that's not that's not from an Arsenal fan perspective. That's from a football fan perspective. If I'd have seen that tackle happen in any other game, even if it was Spurs, if that had been against Spurs, I'd have been saying exactly the same thing. So there's just no way that could have gone to a decision, and then they 
they determined that a yellow card's sufficient. It was a dangerous tackle. It was an unnecessary tackle. And then for him to do the same thing minutes later, where he didn't get any of the ball and he's gone straight through the player again and he doesn't get a second yellow, any other player on that pitch, any other player in red on that pitch gets sent off. It's as simple as that. I, I just don't know how we got into a situation in, in the game where this is the same referee that sent Martinelli off at Wolves for two yellow cards in the space of 20 seconds. One for obstructing a throw-in, which he didn't actually obstruct because they still took the throw-in. Mm. Then allowed them to play on, even though it was a foul throw. And then booked him for a shoulder barge. Yeah. Um, but he couldn't, wait, go, I, he couldn't wait to send him no, off. I was at that game, wait. I remember it. And they were actually saying like afterwards, if Martinelli had known he was going to get a yellow card, he wouldn't have done the second second yeah. one. But for him to give two, for him to let the advantage go and then give him two yellow cards, it's it's like I say, it's exactly the same referee. How he's managed to do that, and then he's not grown some balls and sent him up, sent you know the other player off. It's it's got to be corruption. It's got to be. Well, I, I I come back to, and obviously I use I know I sound I probably sound like a biased prick, but I use Arsenal examples because I watch more of Arsenal than anyone else. Tommy Asu's red card at Selhurst Park. Yeah, for the throw in. Two yellows. In three minutes, without one for time wasting, even though we you know Arsenal never time waste. And the other one for running behind a player. And a slight mm. bit of contact. Now he throws himself on the floor and second yellow card to produce. No hesitation from the referee whatsoever to produce two yellows. Uh, I, are we at a stage now with VAR where just, just fucking get rid of it? What's the point of it? It's just doing more harm than good, isn't it, really? Because they're not getting the results right. They bought it in so that they could get the results right. And even now, they're probably getting more wrong since VAR has come in than they have right. Yeah, absolutely. It's just it, like you say, it creates more controversy. There's mm. so many talking points every weekend. Whereas I think beforehand, you you something could happen in football, and you you go down the pub with your mate on a Saturday night, and you talk about it, and then it's forgot forgotten about the next day. Yeah, because you think, well, the referee's made a cock up. He's only human. Blah blah blah. All the excuses come out under the sun now. They can't keep up with the game and. They need help and all that, and then they get the help, and we we're having these same conversations. But what baffles me is it doesn't happen in any other sport that's got technology. It doesn't happen in tennis. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't happen in cricket. It's it, why why does it only happen in football? It should be clear as day. Why do we not hear about you know a decision going wrong in other sports? Because they've got people actually that can look at a screen and make a decision and get that message back to the person that, that needs that message and they carry on with the sport and the fans are happy and, you know, the customers are happy. Why is it only football that they that they can't get it right? Because it is only football. It's too subjective. That's my opinion of, of it. The, the rules are too subjective to just get rid of the technology because it's you got a ref on the pitch that will have a completely different view and idea of what handball should be to the VAR monitor or the whoever's on the VAR. So with, with other sports such as tennis and things like that, the, the rules are crystal clear, aren't they? They're black and white. Yeah. Um, and I think that's it why should, it works better in other sports. It, sh- it um, should be like football. It either is offside or it's not. It either is a card or it's not. It is a penalty or it's not. It doesn't. It, you know, it's not. It's not open to interpretation. It either is or it isn't. Um, and you know, they if if somebody who's paid to do that job can't make that decision, then that kind of explains the level of well, the quality of referees, doesn't it? Because if and and all the all the officials because they can't make that decision that they're a professional in. Yeah, well, it's quite concerning. It is. Yeah. Well, what? Where do you stand, Ash? Would you just get rid of it, or 
tweak it or are we being I'll too critical? Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Not a fan from it from the start. It, it's an absolute shambles. And all it does now is just highlight highlight even more how corrupt and toxic the environment is. Mm. Because it, it's so it's so driven for the bigger teams and the than the smaller teams, just if I mean. And it's just every week. And it's not like one or or even a close mistake. It's it's completely, you know, off the scale. It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, the Liverpool, the Liverpool one was just an absolute shambolic. I mean, and I can't stand Liverpool at all, or Klopp. He, he, he complains about the length of the grass. But, you know, you've only got complete and utter sympathy for the bloke with a decision like that. It was absolutely horrendous. You, you could see, you could see on the pitch that it wasn't offside. And I think, was it 28 seconds or something like that? They, they, they'd made the decision. It, it's, it's boring to be honest. Now it, it it really is. It's you just every week. It's just another story, isn't it? And it's another team that's. I know. That's been um, affected. With the Liverpool goal, apparently it was seven seconds after the restart they realised they cocked up. Why? Because can't the assistant just... wasn't it? Who said about yeah. it? Um, well, the but run... then that Darren, Darren England said, "Well, the game's carried on. Now. There's nothing they can do, is there?" Yeah, but why it's can't like, well, you they? Can. It's, seven, it's seven seconds. Like it's not like it's fucking. 15 minutes, it's seven seconds, nothing's going to happen. They've probably made two or three passes in that time. Nothing yeah. nothing game-changing is going to have happened. The well, ball actually at... went out for a throw within 14 seconds or something. Yeah. So when the ball went out for a throw in, that should have then been... Then stop it there. Yeah, go and, go and explain to the managers, look, actually we cocked up, it was a goal, we're going to be starting again with a with a Liverpool goal and a, and a Tottenham kickoff. Yeah. And I don't really yeah. think either manager can... Obviously, Klopp wouldn't be playing, but Postal he hasn't got a leg to stand on with it, has he? Well, the evidence is there, isn't it, at the end of the day? It was like two yards on side. And that game could have been... I mean, Tottenham still may, may have gone on and won the game still. And, and, you know, fair enough if they did. But it, it, it's such a massive disadvantage. Mm. It, it's 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 scandalous. It's that, and if, if... I'd have felt like running on the pitch if it was me. It would yeah, have um, it would have drove me insane. You think that was the last game of the season for winning the league or Champions League final or World Cup final, you know, something like that to that scale. There'd be riots. There would absolutely be riots. It, yeah. It's it's just a joke. They, they just so, need to scrap the whole thing. I, the last point I'll make on it before we um, finish up is I, I think the time's come in the Premier League, the, the so-called best league in the world, um, to import the best refs from abroad. Why not? Yeah. Why not go and get the best refs from Italy, the best refs from Spain? To uh, the to money's there. The, game. the money's there. Um, they're much better. That's why they get invited to the worldwide tournaments and referee in the the top top uh, European tournaments, things like that, because they're much better. But we don't need a referee, really. If you've got video as assistant referee, what, what is the job of a referee on the pitch to just spray a little bit of white paint? It, yeah. It's it, it's ridiculous. And, and from that being paid, you know, they, they ultimately have no decision, do they really? Or no responsibility. You, you've got a, a system built in to, to make all the decisions, all the goal line technology, all that sort of stuff. What is the point in having the referees? I, I think oh. you should all just go back to how it used to be back in the day where, you know, the striker had the little you know, half a yard advantage and stuff like that. And like you say, if something happened in the pub, you'd moan about it the day after it would be forgotten about because it wasn't, you know, flaunted in everybody's faces. Whereas now it's, it's just so much worse. And with the tackles, like that Curtis Jones one, that was never a red card. Never in a month of Sundays, it was never a red card. And it's things like that when they start slowing it down, you think, oh yeah, it could have broke his ankle, it could have broke his leg. Most tackles could break your ankle or your leg. But you could tell he had no intention at all to hurt the player. His full intention was on the ball to win the ball back. And it was so unfortunate that his foot went over the top of the ball and, and his studs was there that it was then he'd been sent off. And, yeah. and again, a massive, massive impact on their games coming up or if it was a final or anything like that. It's just wrong. It's, it's just so wrong. It's just ruining the sport. People can't even celebrate now when a goal goes in because it's like straight away you're looking at the ref to see if he's being told it's going to be checked for VAR. It's just took and, taking the fun out of the whole game. No, I agree. Uh, you won't see no sort of disagreements from me on that. I'll get rid of it, you know, tomorrow if it was up to me. 
re, re, revitalise it and maybe bring it back in in a year's time. So, well, give these refs some proper training on it. Mike Dean said he wasn't, he didn't have a clue basically what he was doing. He didn't like it, didn't get along with it, and that's half the reason he's retired. Um, but when they get challenged, they don't even know what to say, do they? No. You know, it's it's right. it's just a joke. I couldn't agree more, bud. Um, right, before we go, our little uh, predictors that we do. I've just got the results here from the last one before we uh, finish up. And I've got nothing else to say, boys, and utterly shocking <laughs> from all of us. We all got two points. <laughs> oh, no one. So we did seven games. So there's 21 available. Uh, and we all got two. So it was a complete tie. Not too I'll bad, I suppose. Back. No losers, we're all winners here. That's how I see it. <laughs> just, uh, just, just with a pathetic scoreline. I haven't actually. I'll, I'll confess, I haven't done any for this weekend coming because there's no Premier League or anything like that. So we'll give it a miss and we'll reintroduce the predictor for the following weekend. Yeah, sounds good to me. As long as you're both right with that, and uh, yeah, unless you've got anything to add, we'll um, we'll finish it up there. I think. I think we've been on for an hour or so. Sound. Life all good? <laughs>